Okay, well, welcome to Outdoor Quest TV's first Zoomcast, and I'm TJ Schwanke, and as our first guest, who else did we have but uh, my good buddy Richard Mellon. Richard, you and I go back, I don't know, it's got to be getting close to 30 years now. <laughs> I, w I could say you're, that you're lying, but my uh, goatee gives me away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, we started doing sportsman shows together. We were doing seminars together. We had some of the most amazing interactive stages ever saw, I think, back then. We were so far ahead of the curve, you know. We were constantly, I've always said, uh, my wife and I, I, you know, we've swam upstream our whole life. We, you know, we were, we're always out there breaking trail. And that was, I think, what you and I were doing was, you know, we'd been to so many of these other uh, venues and seen what other people are doing. And I watched one of my heroes uh, in the fishing world, because I, you know, we, we were both in in the, the fishing side of it for tournaments and all that. Watched one of my heroes one time stand up on an uh, empty box of a stage and wave a fishing rod around and talk. And I thought, my goodness, you know, he's trying to paint all these pictures with words, and he wasn't a super good speaker. I mean, fabulous fisherman, but he wasn't a super <laughs> good speaker. And I thought, you know, you could have video running behind and and all that stuff. All, you know, I mean, it's such a visual world out there. Uh, and I think we've incorporated a lot of that stuff into the, the things that we've done at, at sportsman shows and, and places like that. Yeah, I know. I, and I definitely agree. And then there's, um, so Outdoor Quest TV is actually on its 21st season of broadcast now. We started recording back in 1999. And, um, you know, you and Sandy were involved in that right from day one. And, you know, I think the industry's changed a lot. I mean, first of all, there was no Canadian network. We started broadcasting on Outdoor Channel way back then. And, you know, we've, we've kind of followed that broadcasting right through. And this has been a challenging industry, hasn't it? Well, we made a pilot because back then you had to make a pilot, remember? Yeah, the quality yeah. mattered back then. Yeah. <laughs> quality mattered. It wasn't, it wasn't how good the ink was on the check or anything. It was quality mattered, right? And, and so we had to make a pilot and, and send it in and get approved and all that in order to be on, on a channel even. It's uh, so very different world that, that that we live in today, where there are so many more opportunities, so many more channels than that, and in a lot of ways, we have uh, the end product has has been degraded a huge amount. Well, I think a lot of people don't even understand how this industry works sometimes, but you know, basically, to get a hunting or a fishing show on television is just a matter of buying your way on. And yep. he, here in Canada, if you're a Canadian production and can get a CRTC number, it makes it that much easier. You know, these networks have to broadcast, and it gets 35 percent. Siri's trying to talk to me right now. <laughs> Uh, at least we One keep of my wife's friends has a terrible story about that, but they were they had their they had these kids and and so they 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 kids go off with the grandparents and that so they have a adult evening and they have you know date night and all that. And she said after a few bottles of wine and and in the middle of the uh, of the morning they were they were having a, a an adult moment, adult entertainment. And Google on her phone beside the bed speaks up and says, "Are you okay?" <laughs> I can never get Siri to talk to me when I want her. It's just what I don't. So, but now getting back to um, <laughs> getting a show on, on, especially on Canadian television, I mean, it is a matter of money. And, you know, unfortunately, when we started, it was a business and it had to be a business because it was big money back then. We had the quality, um, you know, it was a big buy on. Where nowadays, especially in the Canadian productions, it's a lot easier to get on television for a lot less buy on. So I agree, we have seen a, a degradation in quality somewhat. And I don't know if that's just old guys like us complaining about new ways or, or what to think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy that yells at the kids, get off my lawn, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's, there's, there's uh, a couple things, though, even before you, you talk about that, is, is how much the world, the entertainment world has changed, like TV itself. Uh, you know, at that time, back then, when we 20 years ago, it was TV was everything. And now, you know, we went through a stage where people believed that internet was everything. And, that, you know, they, that there was no longer going to be a reason for TV. But the last few years, TV has fought back valiantly you know, and still has great numbers. Um, it's with the older people or people as they age that, they, that the numbers pick up, but you know, it's still in the 80% 80, 80 of people, that's where they get their entertainment is, is on TV and not on the internet. So I, I think we've seen the highs and the lows, and I think we're coming back into it again. And I think it's mostly because TV is the only thing that's organized, you know, nothing, everything else can exist on, on the internet, but nobody knows where it is. Right. Well, it is. And, and there's just so much of it there. And I mean, I, I guess, 
you know, even though the quality is degraded possibly on TV a bit, it still is vetted to some degree. I mean, it still has to be a professional production and everything else. So, I mean, it's not like YouTube or somewhere like that where you can just throw anything on there. And, you know, at some point, your good quality content does tend to get lost on online at some point because there's just too much content there. Well, that's really important point is that, you know, one of the things that I've learned because we have all of these different um, venues, you know, and people consume your product how and when and where they want to. So some people are going to be happy to be sitting there at, you know, Sunday at, at eight o'clock at night and watching Outdoor Quest. You know, that's, that's their time to, to watch Outdoor Quest. Other people want it, to, uh, you know, on their phone, on, on YouTube uh, as they're driving down the road. You know, or you're never going to drive people to to the same spot over and over again. Uh, everybody has that, that 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 place where they want to be, and it's the, the weirdest thing because you can post that same thing in in so many different places, and everybody has a way uh, of consuming it. So that's one of the things that the, the choices has done is that it has had to make it much more versatile. Like we have to know about the uh, social media. Not just the, the the TV side of it, but the social media and that. Because like you say, there's a lot of very marginally produced shows that are very, very popular because they're out there and they, they have found that audience that wants to watch that, that kind of thing or them at that, that point, right? Well, I think the worst thing you can do is throw a post up on Facebook and go, what do you like in a TV show? Because you're going to get... <laughs> You know, you're going to get 50 opinions on it and they're 50 valid opinions. And, you know, if you try to be every one of those opinions, you're not, you have to find your niche and, you know, you and Sandy are doing Trapping Inc. now, like you guys love to trap. Um, you've got a real following there and not everyone's going to like it. You know, we love to travel with their hunting. We like to go international. Not everyone's going to like that, but we do have our good followings and I, you're hundred percent right on that. And I think we use the TV. I was shocked. I, I heard a number the other day that 95% of the people that watch our show watch it live. It's, yeah. They're not PVR. So that says a lot to me. These aren't people that want to go to the internet. And so, you know, I think one of the things we do, we both do well is we are multi um, platform. So we are on the internet. We are doing a lot of other things. So we're appealing to a lot of audiences, but I think we are staying true to our content. Well, and that is really important. I mean, over the time, we morph into what we are. And I think for me, it's just been a journey back to who I am. You know, there was, when we were competing, especially in the United States, we we're competing on, uh, you know, to be on the outdoor channel, which was the pinnacle. You know, that was, that was as high as you could get in, in the outdoor world was to be on the outdoor channel. You had to, to meet not only all their quality standards and all that kind of stuff, but then there were certain things that were popular. And if you were going to compete in that sponsor world, you had to do the same thing. So the black screen and talking head and all that kind of stuff. And you have a, a bigger history in, in TV production than I do. And you, that used to make you so mad. I can remember, and this is 20 years ago now, but I can remember you being so mad about them when they cut back to the studio and the talking head on the black background would be going and you say, well, he didn't get the shot. So that's why they're doing it. You know, like, that's, that's sloppy. That's poor work, you know, <laughs> and, and it was popular. So, you yeah. know, you, you, we, you'd morph into that. You, we morphed one year we had, I want to say we did 24 or 28 shows and there was like 40 kills in, uh, on, in that, that year. Cause that was the year that everybody was just whack them and stack them. And nobody wanted to know what you're using or, or how you got there. And, and they just wanted to, to, to watch stuff die. And, you know, you, you go along with it because you, you need to you need to find your own yourself, your, your own format. And you need to, uh, you know, once again, at the business side of it, how big was our first buy? Do you remember? I don't, but I'll, I'll guarantee it was probably, you know, five times what we're paying now. It was, it was a lot of money back then. It seemed to me it was like $120,000 U.S. or something like that. Yeah, it was crazy. And I mean, that was one thing back then too. You had to have a business plan. And one thing I'll say about, you know, both, our, you know, both of us through our business lives, like we've always made money through a business. And it I, may, may not have been a lot. <laughs> well, I can remember that very first year because we went and hit a bunch of shows and that kind of stuff. And we signed sponsors and, and all that thing. I think by the time it was done, we paid cameraman and we paid editing and all that. I think you got $17 and I got $17. That was, that was the profit for the year, right? Yeah. 
But I mean, that was big, right? Like it was, you know, there's so much vanity television nowadays where people are just willing to lose a lot of money to be on TV. And that was never our intent. Like we went into this to produce quality programming and to make money. At the end of the day, it still is a job. And if you don't treat it like a job, I think that reflects badly on your, on your product. It is funny because you have so many people walk up to you and say, uh, you know, you, you, you're living my dream. You know, I, I wish, I wish I had your job, you, you know, and I always say to them, no, if it was your dream, you, you'd be doing it. Cause that's all, all, all it takes is, is just do it. Absolutely. You know, but then they ask you about, well, the, how do you get sponsors? And, you know, basically they, they would take your, uh, the pin number to your, your account if you'd give it to them, <laughs> you know, yeah. but I, I, I give them the best advice that I can. And I can guarantee you that 99 out of 100 walk away and, and they turn to their girlfriend or their wife or whatever and say, he, he lied. He, he, that ain't the way it is. Yeah. I got buddies who know, right? You know, yeah. Or I I've know better. Ever, yeah. Yeah, I've never lied to anybody about, about the, the reality of that. And, and the, you know, it's the hardest job you ever do. You're selling yourself. When, and I think that is the, the real part of it. Like everyone wants the easy way there. So like if somebody walked up to you today and said, I want to start a hunting or a trapping television show, what would be your advice? You need to have a business plan. You need to, you know, you need to know what you're going to produce because what it comes down to is you're asking them to spend money on you to help them sell their product. So you need to know, you know, what kind of, uh, of numbers you can turn from, what you can do from, uh, you know, th that kind of stuff is extremely important. And sponsors are where, it, are where it's at or, or some source of income. It can't be just out of your pocket all the time. You have to, you know, you have to pay production, post-production, you have to pay your broadcast buys, you have to, there's a lot of money goes out, there's travel, you know, there's probably not, a, you know, hunting and, and trapping the outdoor shows, there's probably nothing worse when it comes to the, the amount of uh, traveling that, that, that's involved, you know, the costs involved that a lot of other people, other, other shows don't have, right? Yeah, and I agree. And I think, you know, a lot of people, they'll come into their first season and they'll have shot for three or four years. And, you know, they have three or four years worth of great footage and the yep. first season actually looks pretty good. Yep. Then the reality hits in season two, I need to make 13 episodes in, you know, a few short months. And if you're trying to do that, you know, in your short trapping season or our short hunting season here in Alberta, man, you got to be hustling. You got to be making things happen. Oh, no, no question. You know, that's... That's the secondary thing that, you know, that I talk about is, is, you know, where are you getting all your footage from, right? I mean, the business to me is always the first thing. Because, I mean, yeah. if, if you can't pay for it, you're stupid. Exactly. You know, <laughs> if, 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 I, I can't be any, any more polite than that. No, I just and, can't. And, and you shouldn't Cause, be. Because, <laughs> <laughs> for one thing, I mean, to be brutally honest about it, they're competing against me. Even if they're going there for a handful of stickers, two hats, and a T-shirt, Right. They're competing against me. And there comes a point where that handful of stuff that they got might be, you know, one thousandth of what I got paid by that company. But if they get a thousand people that do the, do the same thing for, for the, you know, the stickers and the hats, that nobody's ever going to get paid again. You know? So I want them to, you know, listen, right up, up front, we need more really good hunting trapping shows. We need it. We, we need to keep spreading that word. We need, we need that industry to be strong. So don't think that I'm trying to cut anybody out. I'm, I'm not. But don't go into it stupid. Don't go in there and, and screw up the whole business, you know, because, I mean, we've been struggling so hard to make it a business. And, you know, it's never, for a lot of people, it's never been a business in Canada. Oh, and you know? I think you're right. There's, there's probably, you could count on one hand the amount of shows that it has been a business for. And, and they've been really successful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, if you do look, I mean, there are a lot of shows now that are into double digit years of broadcast, you know, 10, 12, 15 years. And, and those are the people that did go into it as a business. And the ones that didn't, you know, they're the one or two year wonders. And I don't know, but they're just, you're right. There's a never ending line of those and they all have a better idea. They can all do it better. They're all willing to work for free because, you know, if, if they can show what a great job they can do for free, you know, somebody's going to pay them a lot of money and you have the classic line for that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's that? Basically, you know, the, the price you set today is the yeah. price you set for life. So yeah. if, if you're first, willing to work for price. Yeah. Like if you're willing to work for free today, that's all you're ever going to be worth to that person. Yeah, I had another classic line. Well, you, you, had, you hadn't told me whether you swear on your podcast yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, that first price is your best price. Yeah, I mean, 
you can you can you can bump it up a nickel or or ten percent or whatever uh, a year and and that. But I mean, if it's nothing, ten percent of nothing is still nothing. Well, and, and if you tell someone you're willing to work for free, you're basically telling them your product is worthless. Well, you're basically telling them that you think your product is worthless. Exactly. That's, and I, that's I, the big thing, thing that yeah. people just don't get. Yeah. And I've walked away from a lot of potential deals because I thought I had good value. They didn't. And we just couldn't come to an agreement. But I wasn't willing to compromise my value for what you know they considered. And, and some of those deals have come back around. Um, yep. You know, I, I think ultimately they end up respecting you and it may be two, three or, or 10 years down the road, but they still have that respect for you that you were willing to walk away from what you thought your value wasn't. I had that kind of situation happen just last month and they produce a, uh, a video trail cam and it works off of cell phone. And I looked at the deal and, and I mean like five free trail cams and big deal, right? And, uh, so I've, I've respectfully declined several times now and now I'm up to a, like a room full of them. And I says, look, give me three and, and pay me some money. Yeah. Well, we, we're not there yet, but we might get there. Who knows? Yeah. But it was just the fact that free trail cams were, were that for me. Yeah. <laughs> and know? I think, you know, we've said no to some pretty big people over the years, not mentioning any names, <laughs> but, um, and I think it came as a surprise to them. And I remember one, and I won't mention a name for sure, but they were like, but we're, you know, such yeah. and such a company. Right. And we're like, yeah. well, we're who we are and we need to get paid. And, you know, they've got a lineup of people working for free for them and that's fine. If that's, that's their business plan, but it doesn't fit into, to my business plan. Yeah. Well, there was, a, there was actually two issues that were going on there. One was loyalty and the company that was, that, that had filled that niche in our marketing uh, was a small company, but we'd been with them for, for several years and they were treating us well, we were treating them well. And this other company, it wasn't, didn't matter to them that we would be disloyal to the first as long as we'd, we, as we'd be loyal to them. Right. Well, I, so. And that says a lot too. I mean, it's, yeah. um, and, and that's the other thing I, I, you know, I want to talk about sponsors a little bit. Cause I think, you know, there's a myth I think in television and there's probably some truth to it, but you know, you'll sell your soul to have a sponsor in it. And I think both of us have been in this, well, I know both of us have been in this industry long enough, but this is not the case. And I know when we take a sponsor on, it's because we've used their product for two or three years without getting paid. We have probably bought their product and like it and it works. And you know, I, I'm long past the stage of needing a check that badly that I'll promote a product that I don't believe in. Well, part of it is too. I mean, there's a lot of work involved in this. People have no idea the amount of work and I do not have the time of day to make up for anything. I no. can't shoot around something. I, you know, I've had clothing sponsors come to me and I, and they make wonderful clothes if I was hunting white tailed deer in Georgia, yeah. but they don't work for what I'm doing. You know, but well, we just we just want to be associated with the show. Well, th that's fine, but I can't use it. You know, well, you could do some some setups and that. No, I don't have time for that. I truly don't. And you yourself know. You know, I mean, how many times do you absolutely have a a digital glitch or whatever? And you need to fill some little tiny thing to try and find something that fits there from this vast library that you've got. You know, the the sun is wrong, the clouds are wrong, the you know it's snowing, it's raining, it's not. Is you know that kind of stuff. So I already know that, that that kind of situation is never going to work for me. And, and I told them no. And, and they were just, I, I think they were angry by it. You know, they was, you, do you know who we are? You know, mm -hmm. but I can't make up for it. I, I, I've got no time for junk. When I use something on, on the show, and this is something that both you and I have loyal followers with, they believe us because they see us use it. You know, half the time they see me break it, you know, even, even when it's good stuff, right? <laughs> Well, and, and that's exactly right. And, you know, and we're not the type to sit with a dead animal or something and talk about every one of our sponsors that, you know, made all this possible. I mean, if you don't know at that point, watching our show, what made it possible, me telling you isn't going to sell you on it. Like, I like we, to use something really hard and show that it works and that can speak for itself. You, if you can watch my show and not figure out who my, all my sponsors are without looking at the, the billboards and commercials, then I've done it wrong. You know? yeah, <laughs> and my stuff but, gets used. <laughs> yeah, but also you don't need to constantly try and sell it to the viewers all the time. You know, I'm using an Argo, I'm using an Argo, I'm using an Argo. Because people see you're using an Argo and yep. it works, right? Like, you don't need those gratuitous plugs in there. And it, I, I think me as a viewer, like, I mean, I do watch a lot of outdoor television. And those are the things that irritate me the most. You know, I couldn't have shot this deer without my Browning rifle and my, you know, whatever scope it was. And I'm like, 
yeah, you could have, yeah. you know, <laughs> but um, like, show me, show me why. Don't tell me. Instagram gets me and there will be literally one word, big buck, you know, big buck down or deer, or whatever deer. I saw one the other day, it was deer. And uh, then there was about like this worth of hashtag doing it old school, hashtag, 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 and all the products and everything. It was like, I can't even be bothered. Like, I, I'm not sure where they think that that is actually promoting anything. You know, is, is that the person themselves or, or do you get that feedback from, from companies that they, they want to see that? They want to see that hashtag there, you know? And when well, I think a lot of these people, so-called brand ambassadors nowadays, I mean, that's part of their contract is they have to hashtag so many products a month and things like that. So I guess they are fulfilling that part of a contract. Um, I agree. I, I think the value is, is pretty limited. I, I still think it's hard to beat showing a product being used under pretty extreme conditions that, you know, we both operate under and you don't need to talk about it a lot. Just show using it and, yeah. and using it because you believe in it and using it because it's probably one of the only products that will stand up to that kind of use. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's always this, this situation where, you know, I've got, I've got products that, uh, that I represent that if, if they quit, uh, you know, sponsoring me, I, I, I'm jammed because I'm going to, I'm going to still, and I'll just, I'll use their product. Just won't show it. You know <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, and I mean, you know, I've got one sponsor right now that, you know, we both had for a long time that pays pretty poorly and I've had a lot of way better offers, you know, and I, I can't like, it's just, it's too good of a product. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not going to compromise that just, you know, to put some extra, you know, money in the bank account. Although my banker would probably be happy about that, but well, it comes down to though, I mean, one of the most important things that you put into a show is pride. And if you're not proud of what you're doing or you're not proud of who you're representing and that, that, that shows you, you got to be out there enjoying life. You got to be, you know, happy and confident with what you're doing. And if you're not proud of that stuff, you're not going to produce a good show. And that's in the end, that's the product that suffers the most. Well, you're right. And I think both of us kind of operate under conditions. I mean, our shows are both pretty guerrilla style. It's, you know, shooting, it's over the shoulder, it's rough. There's no tripods, hardly. It's, it's real life. And yep. like you said earlier, you can't take time out of real life to bring something in that doesn't work. Like yep. it has to work while you're doing it. And there's lots of shows at the end of it. I'm like, oh man, I forgot to mention what I was using or talking about. But, you know, you, and then you get 10 emails after that show talking about the products you were using that you never yep. mentioned. Oh, so, yeah. and to me, that is the ultimate compliment because I don't want to be that guy with the gratuitous, you know, every time I shoot something and all that, we don't need that. Like, I'm happy to talk about what I'm using when it's germane to the, the show, but just gratuitously, not a chance. No, I totally agree with you on that. It, it is, it is one of the downfalls. So because the people get into this and they're either doing it because they're, they're trying to, uh, you know, get picked up the next year or, or to increase the sponsorship or whatever, because all of a sudden they realize this stuff gets expensive. But one of the biggest issues you're talking about camera work and that is to find somebody to actually run a camera for you. Well, and we've you know. been pretty blessed that way. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> our partners do it, you know, yeah. like our partners, uh, you know, Sandy, God bless her, but you know, we we're trying to move bigger and better and, and further beyond and to try and find a cameraman, you know, when it's, you know, it's middle of May right now, they, it's pretty easy to find a camera cameraman now, unless it's been like the last two days where it's raining two inches an hour. But in the wintertime, you know, when, when it's down to down into the conditions or, you know, like you're at the top of a mountain chasing sheep and it's pretty hard to find a cameraman. You know? It is. Yeah, no, it is. And I mean, and that's, that's the other thing about this whole thing. I mean, this, I think for us, the smaller we can keep our crews and more intimate those crews can be, you know, like when Vanessa and I are doing a stock on an animal, we probably never talk. And it's yep. just because I'm focused on the hunting or she's focused on the hunting and who's ever running the camera is totally focused on that. And neither one of us really needs to say anything. I mean, you might get a, are you on them? And that'll be the yep. whole extent of our conversation during a stock. Yeah. 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 And I mean, that's, that's, that's hard to, uh, you know, to classify how important that is, that, that kind of, that level of, of uh, communication and all. But another thing that's hard to classify is how much everybody wants to see both of you at once. They want to see that, they want to see that banter in that. As, as we've done more things like, like podcasts and, and uh, we've done a lot more where both of us are, are on the, on the camera and that, that's the, the stuff that people want to see. They, they, they want to, they want to identify with you guys as partners. You know what I mean? Oh, a hundred percent. And yeah, I remember one of my biggest pet peeves when we first started this was the cameraman talking. Yeah. And, yeah. And, I, and it was, I, and I, it was wrong I, back then. 
I have told everybody this story a million times. Uh, this is your TJ was old school. And uh, cameraman, don't talk. We know, cameraman we know the cameraman. That, yeah, nobody ever talks. To, and to me, that was wrong because I was always talking to the cameraman, right? And we've laughed about it many times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but now it's become the cameraman's become an integral part of the show because you're right. It is, especially with us, you know, you and Sandy and Vanessa and I, you know, we are partners already in life. So why wouldn't you be talking back and forth, even though they're behind the camera? Yeah, it's it, it's a silly kind of thing that, uh, you know, that you would anybody would actually believe that you weren't talking to or communicating with them, you know, that you're just talking to that lens. But you remember, though, back when we started, I mean, all the setup shots and that that were done, you know, all the, where the, you, all of a sudden you, the, this guy would be staring at a deer and he'd be looking through his scope or whatever, or his binoculars, and, and you then you'd see the shot of the deer. And then the next thing you, you'd see, you'd be outside the blind looking in at him yeah. <laughs> as he's looking at the deer and all that. And then, then they'd go for a stalk and he'd stalk towards you and be like, you know, it's like, this is all made up stuff, people. You know, this isn't why. <laughs> yeah, like the cameraman wasn't outside the blind when you shot the deer. Like in when we when we do it, we do a stock on an animal. Sandy sneaking up on her zebra or hemsbach or whatever, and all you see is her boots in the rear end. It's not because that's just my favorite view, because <laughs> that's where I'm at. I'm not in front of that. Uh, absolutely. Of that <laughs> but I think that's what's kept our shows relevant. And you know, I, I watch a lot of shows on television. I go, oh my god, that videography is so pretty. And you know, they've taken probably two days just to shoot the cutaways for a show. Never mind the actual hunt. But in some ways, it kind of takes you out of the hunt. And I think the way we do it, and the same when you're trapping, like you got your, the camera is the viewer. Like that's what we treat the camera as, is the viewer. Yeah. And whatever perspective that viewer would have if they were actually in that blind with you or in your argument with you is, is where the camera should be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, I think some of those shows, like you talked about, that, that, that have the, uh, you know, the, the, the fabulous uh, cutaways and all that kind of stuff, a lot of that ends up being filler. Okay. And so really it kind of takes away from the, the actual sh the hunt, the show, the, the trapping, whatever, because it's filler, you know, like, I mean, I have days worth of days worth of, of running machines and, and, you know, GoPros and all that kind of stuff. But most of the time it never goes into a show because, you know, you, 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 you have one setup and, and one segment and that'll go from, you know, from commercial to commercial or, or whatever, by the time you're done with your editing and your adding and stuff to throw in, some traveling or a sunset or, or all that, that's all just filler, you know? So is it more important to put that filler in or actually show the story that you wanted to show? Exactly. You know? And I mean, our philosophy, I think right since day one, is just, you know, that camera is the viewer and they're coming right along on that adventure with us. And that, that's what we want to portray. And, you know, I keep looking at all these other shows, man, we should be doing this better. We should be doing this better. And then, you know, Vanessa will say, We've been around 21 years with the longest running hunting show in Canada. Maybe yeah. we're doing something right. Yeah. yeah. Damn women and their logic, right? I know. They're always <laughs> so sensible. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> so we talked a lot about TV. Um, but there's no way you can make it just as a television production anymore. There's just not enough money in Canada, especially. We're doing lots of other things, lots of social media, you know, these kind of Zoom casts, podcasts, producing content. Um, maybe it's just a little bit of a rundown, some of the stuff you're doing that makes money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you and I had a, a, a business together and it produced, we produced that feature you talked about, right? And then it was uh, started as a, a pool and a stage. and we kept adding stuff to it, you know, and then pretty soon we were producing a feature, an, another hunting stage and a, and a feature uh, of a uh, kid's fishing pool and all that. It all made money, but to separate it all out and say, this makes this much money, that much we discovered was just about an impossible job. Yep. And that's kind of where I'm going with all this is that everything all together adds up. For me, probably my least most important stuff is uh, Instagram and Twitter. Um, I don't know whether it's, being 60 years old or, or what, but I really don't get them. I really don't get them. Or perhaps my, my product isn't, isn't pertinent to it. Um, and I'd agree with that a hundred percent. I mean, we're on both those platforms and, and try to use them more, but I rarely, you know, I never have a sponsor say, Oh, somebody saw your post on Twitter and bought this. Um, I get that a lot from Facebook, 
Yeah. Well, I do have two sponsors that are really happy about, about every time I'm on Instagram because then they'll, they'll take and include me in their story, which do you know what a story is? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's better. I, I, I get, I get notified that I'm included in their story, but I just never, never, you know, it's one of those things that I've wrote down about 900 times that I should take the time to learn. And <laughs> so far all I've done is wrote it down 900 times. It's probably the least most important, but we do a lot of other stuff. Um, the, I think, the biggest thing is is to find a market or a place to market your your digital product because when you're done with TV broadcast, you can turn that into a lot more um, hits, a lot more sales, and that for your your people, for your sponsors, which is really important. It's always important, and you can turn it into uh, you know it can also become a a tool that you use to increase your number of people on Facebook. You know, like you said, Facebook is we have two Facebook pages, you, you as well, plus our, our personal stuff. Those are, those are a big, a big thing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they're going to continue on. I mean, uh, things are getting, are getting a little more tricky out there uh, as far as, you know, people reporting what you're, what you're saying. And, and, it, and you, it's really hard to try and market something like what you and I do on Facebook, you know, it is and it isn't. I mean, what I've sat in on several Facebook seminars and how to, you know, do Facebook well. And, you know, they're always say pictures, few words, things like that. And, you know, some of our best posts are ones that are a thousand words long. Like people will read those, they resonate with them. And it's probably just our audience. Like, I mean, you know, no doubt we have an older demographic as an audience and that's fine. I mean, in a lot of ways, that's where the disposable income is too. No. And I agree with you on that. The only thing is, is, is how do you make that trackable? You know, like, I mean, how do you, how do you turn that around and, and say to your sponsor that, that this is, cause this is where it comes down to. I mean, where, 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 where it all comes down to is that they, they are our boss and, and we need to, you know, show, uh, you know, how many widgets we, we built this, this year. There's a word from 20 years ago, huh? It widgets. is, it is. Maybe, and, maybe 40. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, I can, I can take and show, you know, my insights on my, on my Facebook page and all that kind of stuff. And I can compare it to anybody else and I, and you're crushing it, but if you have a product that you're trying to sell, can you prove that you were selling that product? So, I mean, you need to have more than just Facebook and you need to have more than internet or more than um, Twitter and, and Instagram, things like YouTube are big. Uh, other, other places, uh, Amazon prime, another, another great place. So 75 million um, uh, emails are signed up for, or 80 million now, I guess it is Amazon prime. You, 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 get this giant digital footprint that all of a sudden, you know, you, when you look at it, it's impressive. You know, when you, you sit there and, and look at it, our podcast, you know, hits in the, in the top five uh, often in, in uh, Canada and we'll, we'll get into the, in the top 50 in, in, in the United States, you know, and people say, uh, until you realize that there are Spotify just announced a deal yesterday with uh, Joe Rogan. They have over a million podcasts on Spotify alone. Yeah. And they're and, the little player yet. And that deal was worth somewhere between a hundred million and who knows? hundred and two hundred. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've heard both. I've heard both ways. I know that signing Rogan, you know, their, their stock uh, went up their, their cap index hit the, they, they went up $5.5 $5 billion in less than, or just over 24 hours. Yeah. You know, and I mean, you and I'd work for a 10th of that. <laughs> We've worked for a lot less than a tenth. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're hitting on a, on a good point here is like you do produce a big, well-rounded package, but to break any one piece of it out and value it, it's almost impossible. And I think we've been lucky enough over the years to work with companies that can track, you know, kind of what's happening. And we've kind of been the only people they're working with at some point. So, you know, if their sales go up 20% the first year after they sign on with you, a good chunk of that is attributed to you um, and whether that was through television or Facebook or your podcast is kind of irrelevant. It's the whole package you're selling them is working. Absolutely. And as you're talking, I, I, I went back to I, mentally, that was where the vacant eyes came from. Oh. I mentally went back to uh, when Facebook and that kind of stuff started and I'm not sure I'm, everybody must know by now that you can buy likes for your Facebook page. <laughs> okay. And when a couple of years back now, 
three would be the peak or four would be the peak of it years ago uh, all of a sudden everybody in in the outdoor world anyway was was no longer going to be on tv they were going to just be on the on the internet and and all these people were going to have these facebook pages you know that had millions of people on them and all that well they were bought yeah you know so then the term organic and, and uh, non-organic came about which meant that if it was organic it was your own growth and then people actually come and found you and liked your page and but there was a lot of people who who got pretty lucrative deals based on how many likes their Facebook page had when none of them were actually real. And so things like the insight, you know, page will show you, you know, there's, there's some people that have, you know, six, 600,000. Well, well, ex explain that page. Cause I don't think most people know about it. <laughs> well, you have to have a business page. Yep. Okay. And if you have a business page, you can go to this with this one page and you can compare every week. You can compare to uh, how many likes you've got, how many reactions you've got, uh, you know, what your reach is and, and all that kind of stuff. And you can compare to anybody out there. I have put my stuff up against, uh, against Jim Shockey. I put it up against uh, Pat and Nicole at Driven and all that kind of stuff. And they all have hundreds of thousands of followers compared to my 12 or 13,000. And I will oftentimes reach far more than they do. You know, it's just it's just a matter of, of, of how that's going on. Those are really great numbers to hold on to um, and, and to show because people don't understand, you know, that you know, we're, we've always, as, as humans, we're always, it's always that quantity thing first, right? Whether it's how big the bikini top is or how many cubic inches the, the Ford has, you know, it, size matters, right? But quality matters. Quality matters, and and when you are sitting there with two hundred and forty seven thousand likes on your Facebook page, and you've got a point zero one percent of of a uh, interaction or increase for that week, it's not doing much, is it? Well, no, and and those insight pages, I find that, and we actually print those out and send them to our sponsors probably once a month or so. And like you say, we compare to the best shows, and sometimes we're behind by a little bit, but typically we're ahead. And um, it was kind of funny you talk about buying likes. I, I just looked at our insights this morning, and I have one page on there, and I think he's got about forty thousand followers, and we have twelve or something. Um, he had a reach of six. Yeah. Not 6,000, six yeah. people <laughs> this week, you know, and ours was up around 17 or 18,000. Yeah. So you know that most of those likes aren't real. So it's been a real education process too. Like, I mean, I think for us as old guys, we've done pretty good at keeping up with technology. And every time a new marketing guy starts at a company that I work with, it's like re-educating them again. You yeah. know, and this guy's come out of some marketing school. He's 30 or 20 something years old. And he goes, well, you don't have many likes on your Facebook page. I'm like, let me show you our reach compared to, and then most of them, it's like the first time they've ever seen yeah. that insight. And it, well, it's even worse if it's a 50 year old marketing guy, because they have no clue at all. Well, they just, I'd rather take that. Because <laughs> <laughs> at least I can educate them. It's the ones that think they know everything. They just, they just know that their boss is, boss is breathing down their neck for, for getting more internet action going on, right? Yeah. I, I, know, what you, I know what you're saying, and, it, and it's frustrating. And for me, I've always, you know, there's always that ROI, right? Return on investment. And for me, it's always been, okay, the internet. And I remember one time in my storied career, <laughs> I sold Ford trucks. And we had this whole chart. If they came in the door, if they actually walked off of the, off the parking lot and in the door, you know, now our chance of selling, you know, it was, had gone up to 10%. And if they, they actually went over and talked to somebody, then it went up to 11%. If they, they asked about colors, ooh, jumped to 15%. If you could get them out on a, on a test drive, now we're hitting 20 or 30% chance of selling a vehicle to that person. And so I, I kind of looked at the internet that way. And I'm looking at these people, you know, they got a million or 100, 000, several hundred thousand likes and all that. And I look at how much action is going on on there. What, what, what's, what's happening, right? And it's like, hmm, I don't, I, I don't see that being a big sales tool, you know? Yeah, I, I'm always looking for and people think that, you know, just go for the flow, Rich. Don't worry about it. But I always if I can figure out why something works or how something works, I can use it. Exactly. And I think we've always been that we, we've got to take things apart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember the 650 <laughs> Holly double pumper. Yeah. <laughs> Carburetor. I, think I, I think it's still the mini bike from when I was six that's in pieces. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you can, if you can figure out how it ticks and what's important in there, it was like when I discovered the insights page on, on, on Facebook, you know, cause I'm wandering around and, 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 you know, you're doing so much to try and get likes, right? You're doing giveaways and all this kind of stuff. Pretty soon those likes, those likes are costing you, you know, maybe 10 cents, 15 cents each. Oh, easily. You know, 
and you know that's by doing a, a giveaway you know you deal with one of your sponsors and and uh you know you give away a pair of binoculars or whatever and and you you think that my goodness that's just gonna explode we're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to control this but it doesn't no no it doesn't and and, and, and are those the likes you really want well that's just it so that's where i started you know just wandering around trying to figure out what's going on and uh there isn't a lot of support out there and i think that you know google and facebook and all them are are purposely vague because they don't want you to understand too too dang much yeah. you know they they want to you to be uh you know figure that you should be buying their ads or or, or that kind of stuff right um, and they don't really want you to know what the value of those ads are that they're running in your stuff right yeah exactly and and social media at the end of the day is is kind of worthless because you don't own it um, nope Facebook could say to you tomorrow, Rich, we don't like your trapping page anymore. Or it doesn't fit with Facebook. We're going to delete it. Yep. So you've spent, you know, how many tens of thousands of dollars building up your followers and they take it away from you with no compensation. It's worse than the Canadian gun grab. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get started on that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My blood pressure just finally came out of the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, it's funny. We're kind of running into the issue right now. When, uh, if your channel on YouTube is, is monetized, um, you know, you can't, I can't take my, my grandkids, uh, traveling and right. put that in a video on, on my YouTube. That's, uh, that's exploitation of children yeah. and that, they're my grandkids for God's sake. Yeah. It's hard enough. You ever have those conversations with California where, you know, they're asking you about what you're doing and you're trying to explain, this is our life. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. Perhaps, you know, hunting is a little bit more mainstream than, than, than trapping, but uh, we've had those conversations and, you know, trying to explain that this is just life and, you know, they walk away thinking that I pulled the wool over their eyes or something. And it's not, it's not true. My grandchildren, I mean, not being able to show them on, uh, on a video, that's not right. That's not right. This is, this is our life. It isn't right. But again, we're working with somebody else's platform and, you have no say. And I kind of find it funny when people get outraged on Facebook that Facebook deleted something, you know, it's, it's my right to post that. Well, no, it really isn't. You're right. You're using a public or I mean a private platform at their discretion. And well, if you read the fine print, it's all there. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and that was why I was so excited about what Joe Rogan did. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact that, you know, he signed with Spotify for all this big money and that, and that he's going to be leaving YouTube completely. He said that the, the biggest problem that he had going on was he wanted to put up uh, podcasts like with the two doctors from California talking about the pandemic and, you know, what needed to be done and that you needed to basically like you had exercise your muscles, you have to exercise uh, your immune system, right? Right. I don't like the way I've been exercising my jaws recently. <laughs> <laughs> abdominal muscles <laughs> yeah exactly but he wanted to put that up and, and youtube said no that doesn't fit in our policy because we, we we somebody might complain that that's false news or whatever you know even though cnn has greta thunberg a, a high school dropout that that's going to be talking about the pandemic on cnn so you know, those, those are the issues that, that, that are happening. And with him stepping away and actually making Spotify big is what, we, what he's done. He's, he's, he's taken Spotify from another also ran and there's, I don't know how many companies do what Spotify does, but they're, you know, there's a dozen or whatever. I'm, cause some of them I have to, my podcast will distribute to them automatically through, through the iTunes store. Others I have to set up uh, individually. There's, dozen or 20 that I've set up individually. But what he's done is he suddenly created competition for YouTube, like, which is the largest, you know, the largest video. There's nobody, nobody else even comes close until this. And so what's going to happen? I, I, I'm, I'm happy to see that, that there's competition. I'm happy that the, that YouTube is actually going to have to be responsible because they have, you know, allowed their policies and their left viewpoints and that kind of stuff uh, run amok. And it's not just, you know, for religion or for uh, politics and that, but it's life like what we do. That's not going to be acceptable soon. You know, they outlawed tra trapping in, in California. They got a book, uh, they've got a, a law in the books for, for outlawing taxidermy in California. Yeah. Well, and they're trying to 
outlaw the import of African animals. And you know, there's all kinds of goofy stuff. But just going back quickly to your, your comments about um, competition being good. I mean, we're on competing networks here in Canada right now. Like you're yep. on Wild TV, I'm on Sportsman Canada. Yep. And God bless, I hope Wild TV does so good. And I'm sure you hope Sportsman's does really Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I know there's a lot of competition between the two networks as networks, but I think as producers, like, we really see the value in, of having those two platforms because, you know, I moved from one to the other and well, that was only because of competition, right? Well, absolutely. And, you know, because you want to do what's best for your show and what, what's best for you, for your, your sponsors, that kind of stuff. But you want to see the competition because the more successful it is, the more it becomes more mainstream. Yep. In a lot of ways, even though there are so many more hunting shows on, on fishing shows on TV, hunting and fishing was far more mainstream when you and I were 20 than it is today. Oh yeah. It's not mainstream whatsoever. And that's the whole loss. So we need all the channels we can get. We, we need all the shows we can get. And I totally agree. And I mean, neither one of us has ever been afraid of competition. I mean, if, no. if our product doesn't stand above the others, we're doing something wrong. No, that's right. I can remember, um, you know, when you and I were, were partners in, in Outdoor Quest and we'd be uh, having sponsorship meetings with sponsors and the sponsors, you know, one guy made the comment, he says, you guys just talked about, you know, why you were better you never talked about you know what do you think about this guy and, and what he's doing and i says you know that makes no difference to me no. if you can't make that decision on your own and and decide that we're better I, all i talk about is, is better running somebody else down doesn't make me look better no it sure doesn't and that you know and I, a lot of people need to learn that lesson so before we end our time here uh where do you see the future of all this <sighs> That changed. That, 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 that is a moving target without, without a question. Especially in the I, last three months, it's changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got my, uh, uh, my Nielsen numbers for, for April. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could, I could throw that out all the time, but uh -huh. I don't know if anybody is buying. You know, that, that's, uh, I have... The frustrating part about all of this is that we try and make decisions and we don't always get all the information, right? I have sponsors and you have sponsors that, you know, sometimes you're dealing with, with the owner and, uh, you know, you can talk to them and you can see what's working, what's not working. And, and that, that, that's important. You know, you know how things are going. Some are, you're dealing with a, uh, an advertising company or, or for them or a marketing company and, and you don't really know what's going on. And, it, and they kind of feel it's their, in their best interest not to let you know if you're doing really good. You know, because you might want you might want uh, uh, more money in, in the partnership or whatever. So it's it's frustrating, you know, when we're getting these huge numbers, and you know, some of the people that I can, I can talk with, I can, I can phone them up, and say, "Hey, how's it going?" And, oh, oh, crazy! We're 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 selling like crazy. Well, that's good. Uh, you know, so what are you selling off of? Is it the TV? You know, and and it, here's the cool part: is it goes back and forth. Because with the guys that I do have, you know, the couple companies that I have that I can deal with them, they they track where it comes from, and you know, sometimes it's a TV show, and other times it's it, it's off of your digital stuff. And yeah. So, where's it going to go? You know, three years ago, I'd have said that TV probably had a lifespan expectancy of of three or four years. Now, I think TV's the expectancy is long ways out there yet. I I think that the, we've got a lot of it. Uh, long time. And I think that's mostly because the internet isn't organized. You know, uh, even though we complain about what time Outdoor Quest comes on TV, you know, oh, it's on Sunday and I don't want to watch it on Sunday or whatever, we, it is a, a structure and we learn to live within that structure. And the, the thing about uh, YouTube, you can go on there and you can get lost for days and then two days later, remember what you went there to look for and, and, and that you'd never found it. There is no structure. And if you don't have something in mind when you go on the internet, it, it, it's worthless. You know, I mean, I could stand at the end of my driveway giving away $100 bills if nobody knows I'm there. I'm never not going to give away very many, am I? Yeah, exactly. I'd be there, but... <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask you a question, though. Okay. Do you got pants on? <laughs> <laughs> That's one question I never answer, but it, but it is Friday, do you, so yeah. Do you, do you remember? This is a long time <laughs> yep, ago. Yep, I we do. Were, <laughs> we, we were doing a, a morning show at a, at a, uh, a large uh, uh, TV channel in, in Alberta, and we, we, we go down there 
meet with all the morning people and all that. All that. And you kind of walked around behind and looked and, and, and you turned to me and, and said, you know, they got pants on. And before I could smile or anything, the anchor man tore a strip off you <laughs> a mile wide. And I had to turn my face the other way because I was, I was trying so hard not to laugh, but he didn't think it was funny. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't always make friends everywhere we go. No. No. <laughs> Uh, no, I agree with you 100% on that. Though I think yeah, I'd agree, you know, five years ago, I would have thought television was going to be dead in five or 10 years. And I don't know, every time I look at our numbers, I look at subscribers, they're growing. And, you know, for something dying, it's sure growing a lot. But then you take a look at like print medium is done. Mm. You know, print medium is done, like yeah. actually printing something, yeah. you know, everything is, is moved online there. And I don't know why it works and why and why the internet doesn't work for, for things like TV shows and that. I just, I don't understand. How many different TV channels have came up on the internet, you know? Mm -hmm. And none of them... None, none of them have worked. No, no. Yeah, I, don't, people, I, don't, I don't know. People don't, I, I don't know if it's just people don't want to sit in their office or sit in front of their computer after doing it all day. And then, you know, that becomes a recreation as well. Yeah. Well, when... When things like, like Netflix took off and I thought, well, there's the beginning of the end. And to a certain amount, uh, you know, Netflix and Amazon Prime and Crave and all that have been, have made life very difficult for, for channels, you know, like broadcasters and that you see where you got partnerships now where you can watch global on, on, um, on Amazon Prime. Yeah. You know, you can, you can watch the, the, the local news or, or whatever on, on stream there. So you're seeing those partnerships happen. But I think those tell us more than anything that TV is not going away. Well, it makes you have a television in your house. And, and yeah. I think that's part of it. You know, whether that TV is hooked up to cable or satellite or, you know, just the Internet is one thing or the other. But at least we've got a television as the main feature still in the home. Like people still gather in their living room around the TV. Yep. It's focus of every uh, of every living room. Yeah, like you know? people don't gather around their computer. No, and I think that's the one thing that's really going to save us. And no. you know, like you say, we we've seen the numbers here in the last month or so for our shows and and networks. And you know, if anything, like you'd look, think of this as a burgeoning industry right now that's just up and coming. And, very true. Very yeah. true. And I mean, and there's more people on on the internet than than ever right now. And and yet. The, the numbers, the actual Nielsen numbers, which are, it's, it's awesome to be able to have, you know, a vetted set of numbers to, to work with. But it shows that it's, that it's way up. Yeah. It's way up, even in this crazy time, you know? Yeah. And I think in some ways, television is a bit of a break from these crazy times. Like, you know, if you click onto Facebook or anywhere like that, it, it's nothing but vitriol about, you know, the gun grab and COVID and everything else. And, yeah. I, you know, and that was fine for the first two or three weeks. But I think a lot of people are just looking for an escape right now. And, you know, watching you out on the trap line, you and Sandy doing what you love to do is kind of the ultimate escape. Yeah, well, and that's part of it. I mean, you sell the, uh, uh, the adventure traveling hunting package idea and we just sell the you know the, the the back to the you know off the grid back to the earth uh, idea you know we stuff that we take for for granted yeah you know, that's our everyday stuff people are but, just fascinated but with. but for you you take it for granted but yes. for the average person no no you know that that's as exotic as what we're doing right and, yep. and but it's such a nice break i think mentally and the longer this pandemic stays around the longer you know our you know, our movement is, is restricted. I think it's going to become more important than ever that people have that outlet. Absolutely. I, I absolutely agree with you. I, I think, I think you probably, it's, it's really weird, but I, I've been hearing rumblings that you're going to see more t, um, TV channel productions this year than, than, than we've seen in a long time. You know, yeah. most of what, what TV channels have done has been um, reality stuff, but I'm, I'm hearing that they're actually, they're, they're looking at, you know, if, the virus ever ends you know that they're going to actually get back into some of that stuff yeah which you is look, interesting. when you look at a lot of the the programming that's becoming really popular and i was just reading an article the other day and it, it's just kind of that escape programming right now like people don't really want anything too serious and you know at the end of the day that's what we do like i mean god knows we have a lot of fun out there and you know we've had a lot of fun for 21 years doing what everyone you know, what we consider work yep. but but it's still been a ton of fun and, and i think that comes through and people just want to see other people having fun right now because sadly a lot of people aren't they want to relate to somebody yeah they want to relate and and uh you know 
it's it's probably you know got a lot to do with it. They're so tired of if you were to take everything that had to do with the virus, whether it was politically or, or whatever, off of the the daily news and that they wouldn't fill three minutes. Yeah, you know, and there's I, just and I'd be so happy if they did that right now. <laughs> I don't care how many people caught it. I yeah. don't care. I yeah. don't. I, <laughs> no, and I, not to be callous, but I totally get what you're saying. Oh, I know. Yeah. And but but, but what I'm saying is that, is that you know they want to see how other people are making it through what they're doing. You know how how's the you know the survival rate, so to speak, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, and we, that was we, yeah. And that was kind of our idea for getting the Zoom cast up and going. Now um, it's just you know there is life out there. People are doing stuff. Um, yeah, I, I love hearing people's thoughts on you know how they're making it through this, what they're doing, and some of the ideas are really creative. They are. Yeah. We have a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, I always pretend that I'm walking a line, you know, between the grave and death kind of thing with, with the, my antics around my wife of 41 years. And, and uh, you know, so you have a lot of fun posting stuff up. To, I cleaned out her, her uh, pantry the other day and, and then she couldn't find nothing in it. And honest to God, I found stuff in there that had best before dates that weren't in, weren't even in the 2000s yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know they made best before uh, dates back then. Honest <laughs> to God. <laughs> But it was dry goods, so who cares, right? Well, you, what, but, what could go wrong? You, you know, you know what I'm saying. So you, you post that up, and and people just so identify with that. I think you're right. I think a lot of people want to see happy. They want to see some lightness in, in the world, and and uh, I think they're 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 prepared to to see it. They're they're, they're tired of the way everything else is, right? Yeah. So one last question for you before we go. What's how that? much how much longer do you see yourself doing this? hunt fish trap for a living when what, what am i going to retire to <laughs> exact answer i was expecting <laughs> but people always ask us that and i mean you know like everybody has an end date to their work career like yeah. everyone you talk to i don't i don't either no yeah. I'm, I'm i'm 60 um and holy I, man you're an old guy yeah you're 60 as well <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple couple of weeks or month or something between us as far as our, our birthdays but I can remember it was, and we thought we were so cutting edge, but you go to a, a sportsman show and, and you'd be walking, walking during the halls, there'd be somebody there from an investors group or life insurance or whatever. And they, are you worried about your retirement? You turn to them and say, I hunt fish and trap for a living. What am I going to retire to? Kind of the, the sales pitch died at that point. And that, that, it's always been, uh, you know, one, one of the happiest uh, parts of my life is that I enjoy my life. Yeah. And you know, that old, old saying about if you enjoy what you do for a living, you never spend a day at work. And well, that's true. Yeah. And I think both of us have just followed our dreams. I mean, it's not like either one of us was handed a television career or handed a bunch of money that we could do this, you know, for fun. Like we made it a business, but we've made it a business we love to do. And I think the fact, you know, we've been in the television, well, I've been in the television business well over 30 years now, you know, started with a fishing show way back when, and I still loved it. And I, I, I never think of the day when I'm going to stop doing this. No, I don't either. I, I mean, there's, there, there's things that, you know, I've followed the plan more or less. I expected I'd have more money and less around my waist, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I mean, you know, everything can come true. <laughs> I want to thank you. You're um, the inaugural guest on our Outdoor Quest TV Zoomcast here. And give a quick plug for um, what you guys are doing, your television show, your podcast. Where can people find them? Well, the easiest place is just to go to trappinginc.com. And okay. everything is there. Our, uh, we do have uh, some companies that we work with that, that we do uh, promo codes with. You know, uh, we're getting into more and more of that. The pod, you can reach our podcast from there. You can reach Amazon Prime if you're in the U.S. You can reach uh, our YouTube stuff. And we're, we've just started a new uh, subscription service called uh, trappinginc.locals.com. And uh, the minimum that we could sign up for was three bucks a, a month, uh, but you get all the new videos and everything. That's where everything's going now. Uh, we'll just keep continuing putting stuff out onto YouTube just to keep our YouTube channel active. But Everything's going to be where I know who's watching. Uh, when you have a subscription service, you never, ever have a hater. You know, they won't spend a penny. From, they won't spend a penny from, from mom's basement to, to, to hate on you. And so, I, you know, nobody, nobody bothers with, uh, with, with any of the hate. And, and uh, it, it's pretty exciting. And who knows where that's going to go? That's, that's, that's the next thing. Is we've created this community. And, you know, maybe one day we'll have our own rendezvous or who knows what we'll do. But... It's exciting, and uh, I'm just 
hope I don't run out of road before I, I run out of ideas. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can see it in your face and your eyes. I mean, you love what you're doing and you're thinking about the future. And I, I think both of us, you know, really enjoy our followers. Um, it's kind of funny, you know, we talk about Facebook friends and it's a pretty yeah. generic term, but I don't know. We have a lot of Facebook friends that I've never met. Um, oh, yeah. Quick story before we go, Vanessa and I missed a flight to New Zealand a few years ago because um, of bad weather in Vancouver and just posted up, oh man, we missed our flight. Within probably 10 minutes, I must've had 20 private messages on Facebook. Do you guys need anything? If you need a place to stay, all from people I'd never met in my life. Yeah. And that was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that is cool. That is cool. And you know what, that, that, to me, that is the biggest burden of all this is that you are responsible for that. And you're responsible to make sure those people still think that of you the next day. Yeah. You know, that they still think that they, they, they would, they would call you up and say, come let, let you know, come stay with us or let, let us help or whatever. You know, that's, that's a, a big responsibility. It you know? is. And that's where it, it's so easy just to be you. And then you don't have any apologies to make. Right. Well, no. And I'm like, I'm literally humbled by that stuff to this day. I mean, yeah. you know, for somebody to do that, it means a lot, but well, I'm going to let you go now. I think, um, You've got part of a honey-do list to look after, I was, I understand. Yeah, yeah, because we're not doing anything this year. She decided she wanted to paint. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, and uh, I'm sure we'll be talking soon. All right, appreciate it. It's been a blast.